Hello and welcome to another SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'll be discussing the 2020 mind-bending and often headache-inducing science fiction action movie Tenet as directed and written by Christopher Nolan. Now before I get started my review I just want to give a big shout out to the Introvert Amateur for requesting this review. The Introvert Amateur is another YouTuber offering some fantastic tips and tutorials and indeed some very clever hacks on how to get the best out of your photography. So if you do have some time please do check out their channel. I will leave a link in the description below and will also link an Introvert Amateur video to the end of this episode. So. Here we go. I've been looking forward to this one. So now Tenet is a movie that I have been so excited to watch for absolutely ages. I do love a good Nolan mind bender. Um, but what with everything um, that's gone on the last sort of 12 months or so, I, I missed its original run at the cinema last year and only really just recently got the 4K version to watch at home. And with a two and a half hour runtime, it was hard to kind of find some time to put aside to give its fair dues and my full attention as I had heard that that would be required. And in my house, that's something of a luxury. So, but I did find. So when I did actually finally get some time to myself at the home alone, I, I jumped at the chance. And, and I can safely say that although it was a very different experience to what I thought I was actually going to get, well, to be fair, I, I, I didn't know what to expect from the trailers I had seen. It was all left a kind of a little bit ambiguous, but ultimately, I must say, um, I did thoroughly enjoy the experience that I had. Now, I'm going to try and keep everything as spoiler-free as, as possible. I don't know who's seen it yet and, and obviously where we are with it. But I, I know that I want to say a few things um, that will kind of hint at some of the elements of the movie. And so if you don't want to hear anything, uh, if, of course, you haven't seen the movie already, then please do switch off now um, if you don't want to hear any or any clues whatsoever, um, you know. Of course, as always, when I say these things, please do come back um, and let me know what you thought of the film. If you do get around to watching it, because I would be so, I'm just very so keen to know what you thought of this one. So, you ready? Here we go. Um, in terms of a synopsis, I do want to keep it short and sweet. And I hear cries of joy. Yep, um, I will do. Uh, but indeed, the movie is quite complex. And kind of to go into detail would take quite some time to really do it justice. And that's kind of not what I do uh, when I'm reviewing these films. But Niels has said that the film is indeed about time travel. Um, well, a form of time travel. Um, it's <laughs> not quite... It, it, we got... We kind of got that vibe from the trailer, didn't we? Um, but on the other than that, I think, other than that, I think I will stop there. Um, other only to say, it's not like any form of time travel that you will have kind of seen in any other movie. And indeed, it is quite a complex concept that Nolan is actually trying to put forward here. We follow a character called the protagonist, as played by De uh, John David Washington, who who's a nobody um, that doesn't exist, a spook, if you will, who teams up with Neil, as played by Robert Pattinson, to kind of stop the beginnings of World War Three. Only this time, it has been fought between the present and the future. The plot involves an arms dealer and terrorist by the name of Andre Sator, as played by Kenneth Branagh, and his relationship with his estranged wife, Kenneth Barton, uh, or Kath Kenneth, Catherine Barton, as played by Elizabeth DeBecky, who are key to kind of the central themes of the movie and the target of the protagonist's investigations. So we kind of then follow as the, as the protagonist kind of delves deeper into the impossible world where the future could just be our past and moving forwards may not always be in the direction that you perceive. Uh, kind of accumulating in an all-out kind of high-stakes assault to kind of save the very fabric of time and our very existence. So, indeed, as I said earlier, I do love a, a good Christopher Nolan mind-bending, thought-provoking story, and this was absolutely no exception. In fact, I would go as far as to say that this was one of his most complex and circuitous kind of today. I mean, I mean, Inception was a difficult pill to swallow, but Tenet takes that concept and kind of dials it up tenfold. I had an idea from what I'd heard that this was going to be a difficult film to digest. Um, and so I did actually sit there kind of for the first 10 minutes, which was intense to say the least, kind of scared to even take a breath just in case I, I missed something. Now, in hindsight, 
this only really kind of formed part of the setting of the character for the for the protagonist, and and not so much uh, the film's overall plot. So you can indeed sit back and breathe easily through that section. Um, you'll need to for what's going to come later. I did absolutely love the concepts that are used in this film. Um, they might have given me a slight headache, um, but I was kind of expecting that, to be honest. Um, and it was worth it. It does present a lot for you to get your kind of head around. In fact, I didn't actually get to sleep the night that I watched this, as, as my head was just kind of wearing away all night trying to figure out exactly what it had witnessed. Um, but aside, it is a riveting film and very unique in its execution. There is a bold vision inherent indeed, and Nolan certainly took some risks to bring something different to the table. I don't think it worked to the full extent it could have, um, as given its concepts were quite difficult to digest. I mean, I've set through lectures on entropy and atomic bonding, and I understood more of those than the elements I did in, in this film. I mean, it really needs to come with its own textbook and accredited course before watching. The thing is, it doesn't kind of make it any easier for the audience, as it actually goes out of its way to make things even more complex, with a number of kind of extended scenes with character discussions involving key points which themselves were very difficult to follow at first. Another problem I found, um, okay, so based on my expectations was that it was less of an action kind of science fiction film than I had actually thought it was going to be. For the most part, it was more of a kind of a solid espionage come spy thriller. I enjoyed the unravelling of the mystery which was kind of unfolding, but we had already kind of been dangled the carrot in terms of the film's premise right at the start. Kind of piqued our interest, if you like, and then all of a sudden it seemed to be taken away. Now, most of what kind of followed is indeed required for the story in the end, don't, don't get me wrong, but it kind of does labour a point, and this kind of central portion can feel a little stretched while we're kind of really just really waiting for the meat of that concept to follow, you know? But once it does get moving, um, it's, it is simply exquisite in, in its execution. Um, there is kind of a, like a, a real fine art in its design that kind of captures the details of the character's movements. So finely tuned, it is, it is really hard kind of sometimes to keep track of it, if, I, if I'm honest. Its special effects and its action sequences are excellent. Uh, once it kind of does warm and it does deliver on them, um, and, and big style too. There are some very unique perspectives within the action itself, which, if I've understood correctly, involves some kind of very ingenious camera work to actually get the required result on screen, which really does uh, stand out. It's, it's different. It also contains some quite dry humour at times, which I wasn't quite expecting. It wasn't a riot in that sense. It, you know, it wasn't an out-and-out -out comedy, but it was kind of nice to see the characters playing off each other, especially between Washington and Patterson, who had some real great chemistry on screen. Indeed, I must say that I really did enjoy Patterson in this, and that is a surprise, to be fair. I haven't seen him much outside of the Twilight franchise. I haven't, and, and I thought he brought a real particular kind of essence and sophistication yet kind of a warmth to his character that I really did thoroughly enjoy. The movie also features quite a bold musical score penned by uh, Ludwig Goransson. It, it's quite atonal and off-key at times, but then I think that was kind of intentional for certain parts of the movie, kind of sort of in reverse. I wouldn't say that there was kind of a key theme that I got uh, when I, that really kind of totally stood out, but it kind of did have still that kind of unnerving quality of its own. And from doing a bit of research, I also don't believe that Goranson had kind of worked with Nolan previously, as far as I can see. Now, I could be wrong, but I didn't find a match to any of his films, with uh, David Julian and Hans Zimmer being Nolan's most frequent musical collaborators. However, what I must say is, although Goranson hadn't actually worked with Nolan before, um, on a motion picture at least, he did actually manage to capture the essence and feel of the music used in his previous movies, so that you knew instantly you were watching a Christopher Nolan production just by virtue of the score. So, overall, this is another fantastic movie from Christopher Nolan. It is bold in concept, design, execution, and, and bringing us a really intriguing concept and enthralling story, which really does captivate for the most part. With some fantastic cinematography and such enormous scope and implications within this world that Nolan has created, 
it suffers from pacing, in my opinion, particularly through the midsection of the movie, but kind of, it does more than redeem itself in the final act, and overall, it is ingenious, and mind-bending ideas are the main pull for me here. They don't always work, you know, in reflection, some of them are a little bit backwards and coming forwards, but, you know, it's a hard movie to follow, and I'll be honest, I didn't quite understand it all, but I did get enough to understand the basic premise, and I did enjoy what I got. At times it was hard to know if we were coming or going, and I do mean that in the temporal sense. So, I think I think with hindsight, uh, my advice to myself uh, would have been to kind of simply strap myself in and just go with the flow for the first watch, you know? Not to try and kind of make too much out of it and kind of just simply absorb what you can. Then go back for a second viewing, which I am more than looking forward to. Um, I just might need to make sure my brain is heading in the right direction to do that. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. We've absolutely loved having you here at SciFest Movie Talk. We would definitely love to have you back. But most of all, thank you very much for joining us. Goodbye.